practice in which I'm a professional tarot nerd. And today, I'm a storyteller. And I'm glad you're here. Spooky season is upon us again, and this is another little ghost story in a series I'm calling The 13 Days of Halloween. I know it's not an inspired name, but I couldn't go with the obvious one because of, you know, there's this movie. Now I grew up out in the country. When I was a kid, I had me some adventures, let me tell you. Some were hilarious. Others were exciting. And still others were mysterious and spooky. Now all these stories are true, even if they didn't happen. Now you might not expect interesting history coming from the middle of nowhere, but Bradley Cave, might surprise you. First discovered in the late 1800s during a geological survey, uh, Bradley Cave was, was a limestone cave. It was common in the area. And it had a couple of accessible entrances, but even before the discovery of that cave, locals would tell stories about strange lights and sounds coming from the woods late at night. And every now and then a hunter who failed to return from his hunt. Well, his disappearance would be blamed on those spirit lights out in the woods. Early 1900s, Oscar Bradley bought all that land around that cave to take advantage of the opportunities that lumbering and all that hardwood afforded. And at that time in the country, there was what might have been called a health resort craze. It was in the early 20th century. When Mineral Springs Hotel and Resort was built in the neighboring community, Mr. Bradley and his business partners thought they might take advantage of that increased tourism in this out-of-the-way corner of the state. So they opened a new entrance into that cave and built inside it bars, a dance floor, a stage, fireplaces for cooking food, and even a coat check room. And they build Bradley Cave as the only underground gambling club in America. Now, folks visiting that nearby resort would spend their evenings dancing, drinking, gambling, and generally having a good old time. Now, I heard that during the life of the club, occasional disappearance still happened, but they were written off as misadventure, even though the unusual lights in the woods were still seen from time to time. I guess mysterious disappearances weren't good for business. With the ratification of the 18th Amendment to the Constitution, which began the Prohibition era, the phrase underground club took on a new meaning as a speaking. The health resort was still a popular destination, and even though alcohol was now illegal, Bradley Cave reportedly still did a brisk business, assisted, no doubt, by the numerous bootleg stills operating in the area. Now, although the health resort floundered in the 20s and was later converted into a hospital and sanitarium, Bradley Cave continued to do a brisk business until the late 30s when state officials closed it down, even though the prohibition had been repealed about five years earlier. Now, the official reason for closing down Bradley Cave was that it was on a list of establishments of ill repute targeted by the governor. But there were rumors of the disappearance of a young man called Axel Wingard. The Wingards were a, a wealthy and uh, politically influential family, and he'd last been seen in the area around Bradley Cave. Now, although the owners of Bradley Cave were arrested on some vague charges, no one was ever convicted. However, the underground club was never reopened. A few years later, all that remained inside that club burned in a fire, and it continued resting unused. When I was a teenager, one of the adventures my buddies and I would have was something we called cave crawling. 
fancy word for that is spelunking, but we weren't very fancy, and I, I guess I'm still not. We visited Bradley Cave several times. You, you had to park down the road a ways and kind of hike your way in. The inside of that first chamber still held some of the remnants of its life as a speakeasy. The old stone bar, the fireplaces, the old coat check room. And it wasn't much in the way of graffiti, as you might expect, but you could still see the soot and charring from when the place had burned. Now we would spend hours exploring those chambers and passages which extended into the hillside much further than had been used in the club. Now we'd find empty beer cans and snack wrappers and once we even found a blanket laid out on the floor in one of the chambers. All evidence of teenagers teenaging. But it never struck me as spooky at all. I feel like I should say at this point that cave crawling is one of those stupid things that teenagers often get themselves into trouble with. Caves can be dangerous places, and I don't recommend exploring them without the guidance of an experienced spelunker. My buddies and I did our cave crawling during summer days, but I was curious about all the stories that I'd heard about the strange lights and sounds around that cave. When I decided I wanted to explore these stories for myself, I couldn't get any of my buddies to go with me. One of them said they didn't want to go explore the cave in the dark. Dude, it's always dark in the cave, I said. He was unconvinced, so I decided to head out there on my own. Now, almost on a whim, I chose to explore that cave on Friday night after I got off from work in the little grocery store where I earned the gas money. This particular night was dark like most country nights, but I remember too that there was no moon that night. I parked my car where we usually did, and I took my trusty flashlight and hiked on up to the entrance of Bradley Cave. A couple of times I thought I spied lights out of the corner of my eyes, but when I turned to look, the woods were dark like you'd expect. And the only sounds that I heard were my own footsteps on that old gravel road and the infrequent rustling sounds in the woods like you might expect from nocturnal critters going about their business. I cautiously entered the cave shining my old flashlight in and immediately noted how different it felt Somehow that empty old cave felt full. I wrote it off as a fluke of perception since I was there alone this time and at night. I hadn't planned on exploring anything more than the, the chambers and little rooms that had been used when Bradley Cave was the only underground club in America. I took note of everything which I could see in the glow of my trusty flashlight. The scattered graffiti, some of which could be made out and some couldn't. There was the usual, you know, Roger was here in 65, Betty loves Bobby and so on. And there was some that just looked to me like abstract art. After what I felt was a thorough exploration of the rearmost chambers, I decided that this was just a cave with a unique history. There wasn't anything spooky or mysterious about it at all. But that's when that musty smell common to many caves was replaced by the aroma of food. And we're not talking fast food either, we're talking good food. I smelled steaks and potatoes. And as I tried to place it all into context, and to hear the sound of music. It wasn't from a radio either, and it wasn't current music. I was hearing good old-fashioned jazz. Slowly, in the first chamber, a dim light appeared and became more bright, so bright that my eyes, which had become accustomed to the dimmer light of my trusty flashlight, were a bit dazzled. 
Now, I was thinking that a group of kids had shown up for a party. When I stepped into that first chamber, I froze. I was stunned. I hadn't encountered a party of teenagers at all. The room was filled with, with adults, all of them dressed in old styles. And they were deeply entrenched in the various things you might expect of people having a good time at a bar. Over there was a group of men playing poker at a really nice table. And over there were couples dancing on the dance floor, excited as the band played from the stage. Over there at the bar, no longer the ruin it had been moments ago, were people drinking and smoking, having a good time. I was standing there dumbfounded by all that I was seeing and hearing. A finely dressed couple came up to me exclaiming how good it was to see me and, and they took me by the arms and they guided me over to a large table it was covered in trays and plates and bowls of delicious smelling food and all around were bottles of drinks of all kinds and people all around laughing joking enjoying each other's company there, my, my two uh, new companions uh, pulled out a chair and urged me to sit. I was still kind of stupefied by everything. It certainly wasn't anything I had expected, but it felt nice to see everybody having a good time. And, and I really had nowhere else to go, so I might as well stay for a spell. Now, drinks were poured, and Plates were offered, in spite of how nice everybody was and how good that food smelled, how thirsty I was, something didn't seem quite right. So I refused the food and the drink, and instead I just took it all in. I watched and I listened for a bit, and that band really was good. It was about this time a man, probably in his early 20s, pulled up a chair beside me and introduced himself. He stuck out his hand and he said, Hi there. I'm Axel Wingard. As I shook his hand, I realized why wow, that name sounded so familiar. The hair on the back of my neck stood itself to attention and my arms broke out in goose flesh. And as I shook his hand, I stuttered out, Pleased to meet you. Now, I didn't immediately run out of that room, but it was a near thing. I stood, politely excused myself, just like Mom and Daddy had taught me. And I walked as calmly as I could from that first chamber of Bradley's cave, and I left it behind. When I emerged, my eyes were assaulted by a noonday sun and when I turned to look behind me, the cave entrance was as dark as you'd expect. Music was gone, been replaced by the usual sounds of the woods in the afternoon. And that's when I realized the true horror of my situation. I had stayed out all night. I was going to be so grounded when I got home, and I was. And I never went back to Bradley Cave after that, not even in daylight. Several years ago, new property owners uh, sealed that cave entrance with some concrete, put up fences. And so far as I can tell, since then, no one has gone missing in them woods. Thank you for spending some time with me today. I, I hope you've enjoyed this little story about Bradley Cave. And if you did, please like, subscribe, share, and comment. I'm Skaji, 